Have you ever had those times when the game just kind of drags on? Maybe you're doing a shopping session, or the players are just exploring the city, but it's not really hitting with that same level of fun. That's because, as the old adage says, there is no show without drama. A session where everyone gets along and nothing unpleasant happens is boring. That's not why you're playing this game. So, I need you, as a GM, to always be thinking, how can I add drama to the session? Maybe not every scene. Occasionally, you may want some contrast to make the drama stand out. But if you go an entire session without drama or conflict happening, was it really worth even playing? Does everything look conflict-free? Then something new and unpleasant needs to be introduced. In writing, there's something known as Chandler's Law. When in doubt, have a man come through the door with a gun in his hand. Maybe he's attacking with the gun. Maybe he's threatening with the gun. Maybe he's bewildered and doesn't know why he has a gun. Something, anything, to spice things up. And of course, the man with the gun thing is just an example. It could be anything of interest. Orcs attack. An injured prince stumbles in. A wandering ranger falls from the tree, already unconscious. Even the third doctor from Doctor Who said, The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, but it's not necessarily the most interesting. Planning ahead, being conservative and safe, keeping it simple and taking your time, these are all hallmarks of a dull adventure. Introduce a little bit of conflict or chaos whenever you can. For example, in my live stream game of Winnemere Fantasy Online, one of the players wanted his character to be focused on boats and fishing. Yeah in an adventure. So I had to find a way to make it interesting. Thus I came up with a series of checks where he can continue to roll at higher and higher difficulties for greater rewards. Each time he succeeds, he can take the success or risk it all for a higher chance of greater rewards. I basically turned fishing into a form of gambling, making what would have been a simple and boring skill check into something interactive with risky stakes that actually had them on the edge of their seat. Especially since the other players could describe how they were assisting him in working together just for fishing. The rule of drama is that there should always be a new source of drama or conflict just around the corner. The only exception is if you're at the end of a campaign maybe. Your climax is done, the knots of the story are all becoming straightened out, and you're in your denouement or wrap-up stage. Although, if you want to make this part a little more memorable, you could still introduce one final point of drama, and leave the entire thing on a cliffhanger, making the players wonder forever, what if? But at every other point, think to yourself, where's the drama in this scene? Let's look at shopping sessions. Most of us in the GM chair has fallen prey to something like a shopping session, or similar more than once. Players have some items, resources, or something else they want to monkey around with. Sure, there are some players that have tons of fun with that, I know when I'm a player in a D&D or Pathfinder game, I often actually volunteer to track all like the party pot and equipment, but it leads to pretty unmemorable sessions. No one goes, Oh man, remember that session where it took us an hour to sell all the spare equipment we had and buy a bunch of arrows to restock? Oh, good times. No, that's generally not a thing. And if it is, how boring is the rest of your game? But something like a shopping session doesn't have to be boring. First of all, simplify the process of RPG maintenance as much as you can. If you're in a narrative system, a rules light system, where equipment is simple or more abstract, you don't have to worry about this as much. But if you're playing in something like D&D or Pathfinder, this becomes a thing. So make sure you already have set expectations for maybe some standardized prices if people want to offload or buy things on their own. Don't make them go through every little fiddly bit every time with you as the GM. Remember, we're looking for drama, not numbers maintenance. That's why, even in shopping episodes, assuming the players haven't made their own chaos already, it's time for you to put some in there. This is the best time to incorporate Chandler's Law. The new bit of drama or interest could be a hook for the next adventure, but it doesn't have to be. Because here's the thing about little bits of drama like this. It does not have to focus on the player characters. Oh sure, you do want most of the story to focus on the PCs. The players aren't there to play second fiddle to the rest of the story. 
But sometimes, if you throw a little bit of drama that has basically nothing to do with the PCs, but is still there to be noticed and interacted with, that's when your world feels dynamic and alive. Because the player's brains start to go, Oh, there's things going on out there. It's a big world with a lot of moving parts. Example I did was in a Pathfinder campaign years ago that I ran called Bailey's Corners. It was a long-running campaign set in a single infinitely large city of the same name. The players had a few levels under their belts and were sitting in the tavern. When I described the tavern, I made sure to describe another adventuring group of obviously higher level. They were keeping to themselves. This was during a downtime scenario, so the players were just expecting to roll maybe some healing, call a rest, do some maintenance, and move on. That was until someone with a black blade stabbed one of the adventurer NPCs in the back. The knight, or paladin, or whatever he was, was slain instantly by an assassin who then rushed out the door, bumping the PC's table in the process, spilling all their drinks. Voila. The man with the gun, or in this case dagger, appears, does something interesting, I have it loosely connected to the player characters by having him bump the table while fleeing, and it goes from there. It was an event that had no real story implications to the campaign. It prompted a lot of roleplay as the party healer rushed over to try and help the fallen knight, then after comforting the NPC group, watched solemnly as they carried their fallen friend off to the temple for his last rites. There was no adventure, no way to win or lose. The knight was already fallen. Even if they'd caught the assassin, I would have had the assassin say nothing and respond in no way. But it was drama. The world was alive. Who were these people? Why did an assassin stab the knight? What happened? The players didn't know and couldn't find the NPC group afterwards. It wasn't until much later in the campaign that they even saw this same NPC adventuring group again. But all they saw was the group fighting some great dragon in the distance, lightning and fire flashing, the warrior riding a winged mount, fighting something that was obviously way too tough for the PCs to even think about touching. The players had to duck to the side and even save a few people due to following debris from the broken buildings. Once again, random drama enters the scene. I do have it involve the PCs in some way, but only tangentially, and they assist people against side effects of a much more powerful fight that they aren't even in. It's drama, it doesn't take over the main story, and it made the world feel alive. The best part is, that's the last time they ever saw that group. I never explained it, never said who they were, because we didn't need to. Narrative games like Cypher and Fate have mechanics to help with this, which is why they're better for the GM to control the flow and drama in each scene. In Cypher, it's the GM intrusion mechanics that can actually reward players for accepting extra drama into their lives. In Fate, it's the complications that can let the GM shake things up while being supported by the system. But that's not to say you can't do the same thing in a game like Dungeons & Dragons, Pathfinder, Shadow Dark, Rifts, Vagabond, you name it. There's nothing stopping you from adding drama to virtually any situation. Remember, players are usually coming to your table for excitement, adventure, action. Even if that excitement and action is social drama, environmental, or a fight, doesn't matter. There's so many types. It doesn't always have to be, oh, the goblins are attacking again. So I want to give you an exercise to do. The next time you're preparing for a scene, not even the whole session or anything, just, just the next scene, think about the world around that scene for a moment. Not the player characters, but the, the NPCs, the environment, everything going on. Things that don't necessarily have anything directly to do with the player characters. What dramatic thing could be happening in that time and place as other people, heroes, monsters, and entities do their thing. What would be happening even if the player characters weren't there that could be dramatic? Now, how, even if it's just briefly, might this affect the player characters because they are there? Something they see maybe in the distance, like an unexpected explosion. Maybe a local thing like two men in the bar getting into a fist fight before the cops take them away. Maybe they find something that hints at this larger world, like a lost letter from a father with a couple of coins in it that say, this is for Nancy's new teddy bear. Think of a couple of points like this. You don't need a story behind it. 
Like that letter, for example. We don't need the names of the parents, what they look like, where Nancy is, etc. In fact, it's better left entirely unexplained, because then the player's imagination is probably filling in those blanks instead of you, which always feels more real to them in the end. Now, if this were a novel, video game, or TV show, I would caution against constant drama. I did mention earlier, a bit of contrast is a good thing. You need contrast for some calmer times for the mind to rest, or it starts to all become white noise. And yes, it's good to have those quieter moments in longer sessions. The days when I used to run 6-8 to eight hour sessions definitely need it. But here's the thing, in a campaign for an RPG you often play out over the course of months, or even years in real time, it's only in little snippets. Most people only get a few hours of play at any one time. Then they have an entire week or longer away from that drama before getting those few hours again. Most players are getting that contrasting time by waiting a whole week before another session. So unless you're lucky enough to get to play those longer sessions, don't worry about having drama in most scenes. People have been waiting all week for that stuff. Look at the Postmasters of the Universe one-shot I did with Tree and Monk, Indestructible Boy, Dungeons and Discourse, Mr. Tarask, and Bad Hair Gaming. There wasn't a single scene where something dramatic didn't happen. Even if it was just in the background, or during that like one moment they actually got to rest, even then something happened. And I got tremendously good feedback about it. So please, never have a dull moment. Do that exercise I asked of you. Write down a short list of random drama that can happen in just about any scene. It doesn't have to be combat. It could be social, environmental, just something mysterious they find in the background. It doesn't need backstory. It's not an adventure. And the most you really need to plan is maybe a stat block or two if combat is part of it. But even just an unexplained event, as long as it's mixed in with the plot point of the normal campaign, is enough to keep their minds going. After all, they're here for excitement, fun, and escape. So give it to them. And as always, stay healthy, stay safe, and have a good one, eh?